Today is compare day. So today I am going to show you what I have on the right side of my face and the left side of my face reversed for those of you who are watching because of course the camera reverses it. So I picked products that have similar nature. So what does that mean? So foundations that are both matte foundations, eyeshadows that are very similar color stories and have a similar like aesthetic. Uh, lipsticks that have the same kind of formula. The blushes are possibly the same. We'll get into that in a sec. And then powder, I'm going to actually put the powder on on camera as live, if you will, as we're doing it. Because I want to see like how it works um, when the, the makeup is all settled. So I'm going to swatch each thing for you uh, while we're doing this and then we'll go into the video that I recorded so you guys can see me putting it on and I'll talk about uh, my thoughts. So at the moment, take a look. I think you can tell, I'm looking in my mirror, I think you can tell that there's two different things on my face. Like this side does look different from this side, but I don't think it's drastic. So let's go ahead and dive in. So we do have natural light today, but I will say uh, it's dreary natural light. <laughs> New England in the winter is not like the nicest. <laughs> it's just not, it's not all that pleasant. Uh, I would also mention that this video, I think this video will go up right, well, I don't know when this video is gonna go. I am trying to plan all these things, but I'm pretty sure that I will be traveling. So we might miss a video here or there. Uh, I'm not really sure, uh, but there will be some footage of where I go. And uh, if my friends decide that they also wanna be in the videos, I'll make sure uh, I get their permission first. And uh, and then some shopping hauls if I, if I do shopping. Um, you know me, I, I love to shop, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to include it. All right, so foundations. We have Christian Louboutin and the Prada Foundation. Uh, eyeshadows. We have the Chantecaille Warm. This is the Sea Turtle Palette. And then we have the um, Westman Atelier Pods. Uh, this is in La Pods de You. Rendezvous, I think, is the name. <laughs> of these three. I think it's Rendezvous. Yes, it's Rendezvous. Okay. Uh, and there's a very similar color story to this trio and this trio. Um, so I, I've actually had a lot of people ask me about it. Like, how close is it? You know, is it the exact same? It is not the exact same. I can tell you that right now. But there is a similarity. So if you have the Rendezvous from Westman Atelier, you might decide that the Sea Turtle Warm is just too close or not. I mean, you'll have to take a look. Um, Tom Ford. So on my cheeks, I do have the new Love Chance on one side, and then I have Sun Drunk on the other. And I'll swatch them here today for you as well as putting them on my face so you guys can see what you think of that because I'll get to it in a minute. And on my lips. So I have uh, House Labs. This is in shade Rosewood Shine. This is the liquid lip. Um, and then this one is the Maybelline Vinyl Superstay Vinyl, which is like my favorite thing. I love this product, which I never thought I would say because I mean, it's a super, it's like a long lasting. Uh, and this one's in Peppy. We'll also compare the Dolce Gabbana powder. This is like the Holy Grail powders, which I think is now gone off the Herod site. I'm not sure about that, guys, but we'll see. Um, and this is the Floresis Pressed Powder. The shade name for this one is Lavender. This is the Lavender Powder. So it does have a coolness to it, but it has a similar feature to the Dolce & Gabbana. We'll get into it when we try it out. All right, so first let's do the foundation. Like I said, I'm gonna show it to you on, on my face and how I put it on. But first, I'm just gonna do a little bit of foundation on my hand. Now you'll notice immediately, I think, that the uh, Louboutin is thicker. They're both like, you know, creamy, but the Louboutin is um, thicker, but also the color difference. Um, the Louboutin, the, I mentioned it when I did the video, um, that's 15C. So, you know, um, it's, it, it's definitely, it's, I mean, it's, I get, I, it's cool, but it's, eh, I'd say it's more like beige. So if you're looking at the Louboutins, I would, and, and you're somebody who has a cooler undertone, definitely go with the C. Don't go with the N. 
if you have a cool earned stone because even the cool is not that cool. Um, and then the Prada, as you can see, is a much peachier and lighter foundation. So I, you know, I think the Prada is pretty much a perfect match for me. So I would say for the Louboutin, if I were to do it again, I would probably get this in 10C. I mean, it's not bad, it's close, but I would probably get the 10C. So those are the swatches. You can see on my hand, the formula looks similar, but the Louboutin is heavier. And when you start, when you rub it in, and I'm gonna just do it with my finger here, what you'll also notice, at least I think, um, is that the Louboutin has like, it's fills up, like it, it kind of, that's what I'm looking for. It kind of um, smooths out a little more, but it has heavier coverage than the Prada. Prada has lighter coverage. So let's roll the footage. All right, so you can see that um, I've got the two foundations, the Prada and the Louboutin. And on the right side of my face, um, you'll see that I have the Louboutin. And the Louboutin is a heavier foundation. It does provide more coverage. It does smooth and mattify, and it does give a luminous effect to the skin. But what I would say is it is a heavier foundation and has more coverage than the Prada. The Prada is a lighter, almost not there foundation. It blends right in with the skin. It looks like you really don't have anything on. And it just, it, it's a perfect match for my skin color. Um, now the, the Louboutin, if you're somebody who's looking for more coverage, if you're somebody who likes more coverage, you don't really want it to look like completely skin-like. You want to look like you have a little bit of foundation on. Well, not necessarily like you, you have foundation, but you know that you have a, like a base. I would go with the Louboutin. If you're looking for more of a natural finish, a natural matte finish, I like the Prada more. Looking at both of them next to one another, I think that the Louboutin actually does blur more and cover more. So if you have lots of what you consider to be skin imperfections, I think the Louboutin is actually an excellent choice because it is gonna cover more. It does blur more, like it does, you know, give you more of a quote, perfect canvas. Whereas the Prada sort of lets your skin shine through a little bit more. Like you see a little bit more of the skin imperfections underneath. It still blurs, it's still, it's still a beautiful foundation. It still certainly uh, makes your uneven skin tone more, more even. I mean, if you look at my face before and then I put the foundation on, you can definitely see it's an improvement. Uh, it looks a lot nicer, smoother, more blurred, more even. But what I would say is, coming back to, to what it looks like right now, see how this side is like a little bit more perfected and this side is a little more skin-like. So I think it really depends on what you're looking for in a foundation. I prefer this side. I like more of my skin showing through. I like more of a skin-like kind of finish. Um, but you know, that's not gonna be for everybody. Some people will want, will want more, you know, more skin-like and some people want more um, coverage. I think, like I said, the, the Louboutin does oxidize a little bit throughout the day. Now, it didn't oxidize a ton. Like when I look at myself like six hours later, it's not like it's two shades or anything. It's like a half a shade. So I think the 10C is probably the best for me because when this first goes on, I think it looks great and I really, really like it. But throughout the day, it does look a little deeper. So I think it does oxidize a bit. The Prada does not. The Prada, interestingly enough, looks a little off when you put it on, but then once you blend it into your skin, it sort of, I don't know what it does, but it it sort of takes over the color of your skin. Like it, it I don't know what's in that, but the Prada becomes like one with your skin tone. It's, I'm not exactly sure how it does that. But the, the Louboutin does 
oxidize a little bit more. Next, blushes. So we're gonna do the love scene um, first and I'll show you the, the video of me putting it on. So what I'm gonna do with the sun drunk is that, here's, here's love scene, so that's, I'm gonna blend the two together as best as I can, just like I did in the video. Like I tried to take a, I tried to take a brush and blend them perfectly. I will tell you that the sun drunk is much smoother like it's got a silkiness to it that um, the love scene does not have. Like it is beautiful feeling. Um, the sun drunk does not. So here's the two shades. Here is sun drunk and here is love scene. And I would argue that they, I'll make this the, the love scene a little bigger. Um, I would argue they are not the same. They are similar. They are very, very similar, not gonna lie, uh, but I do think they're different. The Sun Drunk is pinker. The Love Scene is more orange. Now, you could take the orange side of Sun Drunk and you can make it more like but Sun Drunk is definitely pinker and Love Scene is definitely more peach. But they're very similar. So here's the, the video of me putting them on. I've got Sun Drunk, I'll put it up in a second. I've got Sun Drunk here and um, Love Scene here. Video will go up now. Um, I like the, the way that the the formula that's in the shade and illuminate the sun drunk, it's super soft. Like it feels like silk. It's really beautiful. Like I said, when these, when these came out, I really like these blushes. Um, it feels super, super silky, really nice on the skin. It went on beautifully. It's more pigmented. It's easier to put it on. Um, like it goes on, uh, when you see me put it on my face, you'll notice like I don't have to build it at all. The sun drunk goes on immediately. It's it, it it's easier to blend out. It's smoother. Um, the love scene has a um, I don't want to say grittier. It's not grittier, but like more powdery. It's not as silky. The formula and although pretty, I mean it looks really nice on the face. I would still go with the the sun drunk because. The formula in the sun drunk I just think is nicer and it's got two shades so you can blend it or you could do a lighter almost highlighting and then the contour so yeah of the two I pick I pick the sun drunk but the um, love scene does, does have more peach okay so eyeshadows um, we've got the where's my where is it okay we I was like where did I put it we have the sea turtle and we have the Western Atelier so I, again, will swatch these and you can see, I'm just gonna do one swatch for each one. So you can see just the pigment um, of the two of them. So the Sea Turtle one from Chantecai actually has decent pigment to it. Um, I said that in my video, I like this one. I think it's a really pretty color story. It's a trio. I think it does have a good pigment um, for what it is. Like it's supposed to be a soft, luminescent, spring-like look. It's not supposed to be, you know, super pigmented or triochromes or any of those things. So, um, and then the Westman Atelier is a very different formula. The Westman Atelier are these little iPods. If you haven't used them, they are very creamy. They are um, like a cream to powder kind of feel. So it's a very different, it's, it's just a very different formula. But you get a very similar aesthetic from this product uh, the, as the Chantecai, because it's this light, springy kind of, you know, ethereal look. The major difference, I would say, one is these are like a cream to powder, but the, the other thing is the, um, the shades are not at all the same. So in the Chantecai, you have a green, a peach and a gold. In the Westman Atelier, you have a green, a peach that has actually more pink to it, and a brown. So 
they are, you know, yes, they're, they're similar, but you're gonna have a very light shade here and you're gonna have a deep shade here. So it's gonna create a different look just because you have di they're different shades. So um, this is the look. I tried to put them on in a similar manner, but I couldn't put them on exactly the same because like I said, one has a light shade, one has a deep shade, and I'm not gonna put a dark brown in my brow or in my under corner. But I think you get the idea that I tried to, to you know, put them in a similar way. So I'll have the, the video go up. Now with the, uh, I, I started by applying that, that peachy shade all over the eye and like into the crease. I think you'll see with the Chantecaille, the peachy shade is much more pigmented. It is a true shadow. It has like a satin feel to it. It's really nice actually. Um, it's a really beautiful peach shade. It's something you could use as a one and done if that's something that like, if that's a color you like. I think I would use it a lot actually as a one and done because I, I like that kind of just, you know, peach. It's like simple um, and it's just easy to use. It looks really pretty and you know, you're done. Uh, on the Westman side, the peach is much lighter and it has more of a, like a little bit of a pink to it. So it's not, I mean, it's, it's definitely peachy, but it has more of a pink to it and it's a much lighter um, pigmented shade. So it's, it's more of almost like you would use that, I think, like me personally in the um, inner corner, um, in the brow, you know, I, I would also use it all over the eye, but you're gonna get a much lighter look if you do that. Then on the Chantecaille side, I took the um, light shade, the gold shade, and put that in the brow. And I put it in the like inner corner of the eye because I was like, all right, well that's, you know, that's where generally I would put that shade. Um, and I think it looks really nice. I think it's, you know, a good, um, I think it's a good, gold shade. Um, it looks really nice. It uh, is the perfect like, you know, light gold shade um, for this um, for this look. I think it's like really perfect because it, re it literally um, it literally like enhances the look without, you know, taking away from anything else. And then on the Westman side, I took the brown and basically put it in the outer corner and into the crease. So of course that is going to deepen the um, the Westman side a little bit more than the Chantecaille side because Chantecaille doesn't have like a deep shade in it, brown or otherwise. Then I took the green. Now, if you notice the green on the Chantecaille side, it is a, a lighter green. It is a mossy, almost, mm, it has like a little bit of, not yellow, but it's, um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? It's more like a, Mm, uh, I'm trying to think of like a good way to explain like seaweed, but seaweed sounds terrible. Um, you know, it's like olivey, like it's like an olivey green, but it's not super deep. Um, seaweed actually makes sense though, because it's turtle, <laughs> it's the sea turtles. So, you know, it's that kind of shade. It's not super deep. When you go to the Westman Atelier, the green in there is actually super pigmented. And, you know, I'm, I'm using the same brush, which is a Klinsky brush, so it picks up a lot. And you can see how much deeper it is automatically when I put it on my eye. So, you know, the, the Westman say, say, side, if you're using the green, and, if you, and I didn't even use the brown that much on that side, if you're using both of those, it's gonna be a deeper look. It's gonna be like, you know, more intense, which is, I think, really interesting. I took the green on both sides and, uh, and lined my bottom lashes with them, with the green shade on both sides. So for back again, this is the look for both of them. I don't have a favorite. They're different. Um, I mean, the color stories are very similar. I'm not, you know, that's, yes. Uh, I think the Chantecaille blends more as a whole, whereas with the Westman, the green kind of takes over a little bit, but that's because it's, you know, a very strong pigment shade and, it, I would probably use a lighter brush, but I was trying to do exactly the same on both sides. So, you know, um, as you can see, like this is just deeper than this one. Um, it's also not as shimmery. Like the, the Westman has more shimmer to it, more lumin, not shimmer, luminosity. It's not shimmery. There's no glitter. There's nothing like that in either one, but the, the Chantecaille is more luminous, whereas the, 
the Westman is more satin. So I don't, I don't have a favorite. I think they're very different. Um, I mean, the color stories, they're similar. Uh, yeah, let's face it, guys. We have a lot of different products that have, like, the same color story. But um, I think, you know, both are really pretty. I guess I would choose the Chantecaille only because um, it's, e well, I'm not, I guess it's easier, like, because you just have one palette. But these all stick together. I don't know. I'd have a very tough time, to be honest with you, picking between these two. Because I just, I think... I think there's a different feel for both of these. And so if you're somebody who likes creams and like using your finger, I would go with the Chantecaille because it's just sort of like it's easier that way. But if you're somebody who likes a powder and you want more luminous, I would go with Chantecaille. We have the House Labs. This is the Atomic Shake It. <laughs> this is the Atomic Shake Lip Lacquer. Um, I have this in, as I said, Rosewood Shine. I, you can see the video when you see it in a second. I shook it up as much as you possibly shake it up. Uh, and then this is the Maybelline Superstay Vinyl Ink in Pep, uh, Peppy. Yeah, Peppy. They are not the same shade. Like in this instance, I couldn't get exactly the same shade. They're similar, but the um, Rosewood Shine is more rosewood, and the Peppy has more like a. Um, warmer tone to it. Um, I will, you know, I, I really like the Maybelline ones. I think they're great. And for the price point, like, I just really don't think you can beat that um, because they're like, I don't know how much they are, but they're like $10 or something. Uh, so those are the two. Here, of course, is the Rosewood. You can see it's, it's a deeper shade. It's like more rosewood, uh, and Peppy has a warmer, a warmer tone to it. So I think you can already see this is Peppy, and this is um, the House Labs rosewood. But I would also say they both feel about the same. Like I don't really notice a huge difference between these two. I do think they last. I do think they're basically kiss proof if you put them on uh, a dry lip. So I put my Emile Cordon on first at the beginning of the video, and I find that if I use the Emile Cordon and then put these on, they don't, they're not as transfer proof because there's like underneath there's that, you know, like um, moisturizer. But if I put them on a dry lip, then they're pretty much like they're gonna stay there forever. So it depends on like how your how dry your lips are. For me, what I would say is they're pretty much transfer proof um, as long as you don't like go overboard and put a bunch of moisturizer on. You do have to shake them up a lot. Like I mean a lot. Like if you if you think <laughs> you think you've shaken it up enough, you haven't. Uh, shake it up. A ton. I was trying to like let this dry enough so I could show you. Uh, I'll see if I can. I can actually. I'll just leave it for a second. Um, on my lips, I'll let's see what let's see what happens if I. Because like I said, I did use the Emile Cordon before. Yeah, there's very little there, but there's a tiny bit you can see right there. But it's not much. Um, if you don't, if you put it on dry lip, it won't come off. Um, so let's let this dry. Okay, now to the powder. So, like I said, this is the Dolce & Gabbana powder, and then this is the new Fluorisis press powder. This is in lavender. Um, that's the shade that they, they sent me. I love the lavender shade. So it will look a little different because this is not a lavender. The Dolce & Gabbana has no shade. So I'm gonna get close for this. Um, I'll have the camera zoom in. Here's the Dolce & Gabbana. Let's do the Fluorasis. At the moment, 
I see a little bit of coolness here because it has that lavender shade. All right, now I'm gonna take a fluffy brush. This is a very fluffy brush. This is the F09 by Chicahoto. Let's do the Dolce first. What I like so much about the Dolce is that it just, it imparts this beautiful sheen to your face that is basically undetectable. Like you don't, nothing comes on the brush. You don't really see anything. And then all of a sudden your skin looks like glowy, but not like there's anything on it, just glowy. I don't know how they do that. I really, I couldn't tell you. All right, now let's try the Florasis. Thoughts. I think this side just looks more glowy. Like I think there's something to the Dolce that might not be something we can replicate. Like I, but I think that this does look really nice. But I still think the Dolce looks just a little bit better. Like a little bit more <laughs> healthy. So I let this dry for a little bit. Let's see, let's see how dry it is. Um, all right. <laughs> see, there's a little teeny bit right there because it's not completely dry, but practically nothing. That is what you're getting with these products. You can have this look on your lips and you know, basically, you're gonna get like, that's just tiny bit because I didn't let it dry all the way, but it's transfer proof at this point. So um, I, I would argue that it doesn't look like super glossy the whole time. I think it dries down to this like more matte finish, but it's a soft matte finish. It's actually really nice. Um, and neither one feels super drying, at least not to me. And I have very dry lips, so it actually feels quite comfortable. It is not my favorite product. My favorite product is always going to be a glossy lip because I like that. Like, I like glossy. I like, you know, lip cheeks and the balms. I just like those. However, I know a lot of people want a lipstick that stays on throughout everything and doesn't have to worry about it if it's still there. These both do that. And the Maybelline is a lot cheaper. Um, I can't give you a reason to get the House Labs over the Maybelline because I haven't noticed that the House Labs is better than the Maybelline. Now, again, I only have one shade from House Labs and for the Maybelline, I think I have three or four. So, you know, again, I, I've used more of the Maybellines. Maybe if I use the House Labs more often, I would like think higher, so higher of the, the product. So I, I, I wanna be really clear about like my testing, but just based on the one shade from from House Labs and this shade from Maybelline, I just feel like the Maybelline one is basically the same and it's a lot cheaper. So I also think the Maybelline has more shades. Um, if I'm not incorrect, I think House Labs has like six shades or something. Um, the Maybelline has like, I don't even know how many shades, a lot of shades. So anyway, um, Yes, they look great. Yes, they're shiny. You know, yeah. Let's let's try it on the face to ruin my face. No. Yeah. So, yeah, they're going to stay that way, um, which I think is great. I'm glad that they have products now that are long lasting that don't make me feel like I want to die because my lips... In any of the long lasting lipsticks that I tried out over the years, I like literally want them to claw my lips off. This, it just feels like, like a normal, like my lips are feel normally.
Yes, they still feel dry, but that's not the lipstick's fault. My lips always feel dry. So yeah, they feel dry. They feel like I need to put some balm on. That's about it, uh, which is what I always feel like. So, you know, it's different though than like some of the lipsticks or the balms now, like the Clé de Peau, which I'm testing out because I, I want to see repeatedly. But I have to say, so far, it really does make the, this is the Precious lipstick, the $110 lipstick. Um, it does make my lips feel better and it does feel really comforting on the lip. So I don't know, that one might actually be more lip care and incredibly pigmented. But the thing is, again, it's $110 and uh, it does wear off. Like it's not, it's not a long lasting lipstick. But anyway, so there are the comparisons, guys. I'd love to hear your thoughts about which you ended up liking more, like what your thoughts are versus, you know, the lipsticks, the blushes, the foundations, the eyeshadows. Um, I will do more of these um, as, you know, you guys request them. If there are particular products that you want to see compared to one another, let me know. I will make sure to do that. Uh, as I said, I am uh, traveling for a uh, uh, birthday party for my uh, for my dear friend. So there may be there may be one less video or two less. Of, I don't know. <laughs> I just don't know. Uh, but uh, hopefully, you know, hopefully I won't I won't be missing that many. So thanks so much for joining me today, guys. I really do appreciate it. I hope to see you in another video really soon.